Hello, Property Nomads. Hope you're well. Today, we're going to look at where to store your precious metals. And the reason for that is there's a couple of places that you might think are safe, but are actually not a wise idea to place them. Uh, but before we do that, please do give us a like for the channel and subscribe using that bell feature below and also share this content with as many people as possible because this message and the message that we're trying to give on property nomads uh, needs to be heard by as many people as possible because we're here we're here fighting the system we are here giving content that helps us protect ourselves against all the stuff that's happening around the world at the moment if you've not watched previous uh, videos about why you should be considering purchasing gold and the some of the tax advantages uh, that we have in the UK of purchasing metals, then I urge you to go back to the other videos and sit through them as well, because there's a lot of great information there, including some book recommendations. When it comes to storing your metals, there's a few options available you might decide to store them at home. You might decide to put them into segregated storage uh, at the bank. Or you might decide to put them into fully segregated storage using a third party, uh, maybe someone like Brinks's, for example, or Loomis, or insert other place here. And of course, there's multiple advantages and disadvantages to each of them. Let's look at storing your metals at home. Now, the reason why you might want to do that is in case of a pure emergency, then you know where your metals are. It's very liquid. You could then use those metals to go and purchase what you need to purchase or take them to your local coin dealer and sell them. That's a really good advantage. If something disastrous were to happen, you know where they are. You can get that done quite quickly. Disadvantages would be people might get a bit paranoid. Um, you know, if I've got X amount of metals at home, what if people know about it? Could I potentially get robbed? Uh, all of these sorts of legitimate concerns might stop you from wanting to put your metals at home you might decide to keep them at home and then put them in a safe. But is that really a safe thing to do? Pardon the pun. Because if something's in a safe and you're robbing a home, you're probably going to look for a safe. And then if necessary, you're probably going to take the safe as well. And then everything is in it. There are numerous ways to put your metals in genius places at home. Uh, some examples I've seen on, on YouTube and other social media platforms fake drawers, uh, people putting them in plant pots. We have so many crazy, crazy things, but they're very inconspicuous. This is why I imagine putting them in those places does work. It's not too obvious. And if you do get ransacked, well, which I hope that doesn't happen to, but if it does happen, then you know, what are the odds of them uh, robbers walking out with you know, all your floorboards and your plant pots and everything? Uh, for peace of mind, some people like to store their metals at home for peace of mind. Some people don't like to store them at home for peace of mind. Uh, you might get too nervous having X amount sat around. So with this and with everything I'm just about to say to you, the decision is completely yours. And, you know, I'm just here sharing this information because it's valuable and it's things that you might not have thought about. Storing your metals in allocated storage at a bank. Now, this is where people think that's actually a good idea. And I'm here to dispel that. I'm here to tell you that is not a good idea. Having allocated storage is good. Absolutely, completely agree. If you have your private box or whatever it might be, fantastic. If you've got access to that, you've got key access, you're not sharing it with anyone, and it's, that's what we call allocated storage. If you've got all of that, fantastic. The reason why you should not ever put that in a bank is think of the reason or one of the reasons you might have purchased metals in the first place. It's to decentralize yourself from the system. It's to get out of the 
rat race to an extent is to get out of the I've got to have currency thing. And maybe you want to get out of the banking system. So if you're doing that and that's one of your reasons for purchasing metals, then why would you go and then store it within the walls of a bank? It, that just doesn't make sense. And that's a bit that people, a lot of people I speak to just don't haven't thought about that. That's why you shouldn't have it in a bank. Because if you're purchasing metals, you might also be thinking or you might also have concerns about the banking system in general. Uh, do I trust the banking system? Do I trust the fiat currencies? Do I like what's going on? What do I think is going to happen moving forward? What's going to happen in the long run? Is the banking system still going to be around? All of these sorts of thoughts, queries and questions are going to come into your head. And if you're buying metals, don't just let them go and put it in the bank. In allocated storage in the bank. What happens if there's a bank run? If there's a bank run and the banks close their doors, lock their doors. Good luck. What what if there is a bail-in? What happens then? I don't know. And I'm never going to find out because storing a bank, not for me. So you have to think of that as well. The third option, and this is normally the most popular option, is allocated storage at a a third party somewhere or a storage specialist. Now, a lot of people will mention Brinks's and a lot of people mention Loomis. They're the two key ones that you could use. Brinks and Loomis have uh, got very good security systems and they operate globally. So you might have some uh, of your metals in Singapore, you might have some in Switzerland, you might have some in the USA, Britain, wherever it might be. Depending on where you live and what country you're from, there are multiple options available. Uh, I know here in the UK, I've got a couple of friends that put their uh, their metals in, a couple of them put them in a storage company that's based in London. A couple of them put them in storage that's based in Essex, which is in the east of England. I'm not going to reveal locations or mention names, that's not fair. I do know that those people do have them in different places in the UK and they love the systems. Uh, everything's worked so far for them, very discreet. And again, the reason for allocated storage is you know it's yours, they'll be, it'll be assigned to you. They'll normally, any good reputable company will normally have some insurance there to cover if something goes wrong and normally access to the boxes to your metals uh, or other valuables you might have is normally quite easy as well. It's very easy to facilitate that. And you might also have uh, security questions and, um, and loads of different things. The key thing is that these storage companies are more than likely going to be okay. They're probably going to be recession proof. I'm not saying they are. I'm saying they more than likely are because it's, it's part of that model, isn't it? So that's the important thing. That's the preferred way, I think, to, to store your metals. Now, you will hear two counter arguments about storing at home and storing with secure allocated storage at a third party provider. What if there are massive issues and the third party provider goes bust? What happens then? I don't know. I don't see that happening, but it's worth asking the question. If there are liquidity issues and you need access to your metals quickly, is it quicker to access them in your home or is it easier to go to the storage company? What if you are in a different part of the world and you don't have any metals with you and you need to get access to your metals when they're in a different country? Again, all of these sorts of things will help to shape your decision. Where are you going to be? Who's got access? What's going on? What's the likeliness of X, Y and Z happening? This is where you have to make the decision. But in a nutshell, they're the three main places to store your metals. You can store them at home. If you're going to store them at home, if you want to be obvious and store them in a safe, that's up to you. I've seen multiple examples online of people creating uh, you know, fake underfloor areas or fake floorboards or fake cupboards, people putting them in plant pots, even in the freezer. You know, completely bizarre places, but inconspicuous. That's the most important thing. So you can store them at home. Big advantage of doing that is in the case of emergency, you can get hold of your metals, 
very liquid, happy days. You could use allocated storage at the bank. Again, I go against that purely because you've got to ask yourself, if you're buying metals in the first place, I'm going to guess here that you are probably either against the banking system or you think something is possibly wrong with the banking system and you want to protect yourself. Therefore, do not put stuff back in the bank. It doesn't quite make sense. But do what works for you. And finally, uh, full allocated storage with third party provider. You could use Brinks's, you could, uh, you could use Loomis. There are multiple other places available. I know of a few examples here in the UK. A quick Google search will give you uh, a fair few examples. And again, I've got friends that have got metals in different parts of the UK in different storage facilities. Again, advantages of that are going to be, you know, it's going to be great security. So that's a big plus. Uh, if you need access to them and you're in the country at the time, how easy is it to get to the facility? Is it 24 hour access? Is it only business hours? All of those sorts of things. But if you're going to be in a different part of the world, is it prudent to have it in this? Uh, again, all of this, there's a lot of variables here. But allocated storage in banks, you can do that, but it's a big no-no from me. Storing them at home, again, really big advantages there. Some disadvantages, that's your prerogative, that's your decision. Uh, allocated storage in a third party facility, again, there's some great advantages there. Also, a couple of disadvantages. Ultimately, do what works for you. And as we said in the other videos about gold and about silver, you have to go back to the basic question and ask yourself why you're doing it. Why are you looking to add these metals to your portfolio? Is it geopolitical risk? Are you doing it as an inflation hedge? Are you doing it to pass on uh, generational wealth? Everyone's going to do it for different reasons and everyone's going to have a different risk tolerance. Therefore, your metals are going to go into different places depending on what works for you. Ultimately, do what works for you. Uh, please do like the channel. Uh, use that bell button to get notifications when the videos come out and share this message with as many people as, as you can. Uh, we're pushing content quite a lot on this channel because the message that we've got is incredibly important. And we've also got to fight back against the narrative and to help ourselves to help you as well and create these win-win situations. Uh, see you in the next video.